We have with us our advisory board members, Alan Greenspan, Jessica Einhorn, Diane Julius, Laura Tyson, Lialkat Ahmed, and Caroline Atkinson. We thought it would be interesting to share some of our thoughts on the economy and on markets. My first question is, Let's put it this way, any economist who can forecast the difference between a V-shaped and a U-shaped is in the right business. The word recession is almost a misnomer. This is induced shutdown around the world to confront the virus. So we're in a completely unprecedented situation here. Well, we are in the midst of a really severe downturn. I think there's no doubt about that. Uh, so we're likely to see our second quarter numbers come in uh, as bad as we've seen them, perhaps worse than the global financial crisis for the world economy as a whole. The downturn to this recession is going to be very sharp, but relatively short, i.e. one or two months. Uh, and then we will start building ourselves, uh, building a base and trying to recover. So I think it will be a bit of a slow recovery as gradually people become convinced and confident that we're containing the health crisis and that businesses, travel, normal life can restart. I don't see a sharp V-shaped recovery. I also think that we'll need more government support just before that, um, that recovery gets going. The steady climb up will probably take till the end of the year. The data suggests that we're going to be pretty well in this recession through the first half, uh, but very likely we're able to come out uh, fairly rapidly with a good recovery. Uh, the, the big risk to that scenario is that we get a resurgence of the epidemic um, next fall or winter, uh, which would then cause it to look more like a W. I, I don't think it's be just uh, one, one down. I think we'll have a few ups and downs as really as the, as the news varies, especially on the health uh, statistics. That's what's going to really drive the markets up and down for a while. The prospects for a V-shaped recovery are highest in North Asia and China where action on the virus containment was early and appears to have been quite effective. The recovery in Europe and the US looks much more like a U-shaped, a very gradual exit, because we have been late and ineffective in controlling the virus. When you look at the US alone, and certainly when you look at the global economy, uh, we will see different impacts in different geographic areas, uh, according to demographics, uh, and other such features, and the shape of the coming out will be um, slow and unsteady, not fast and straight up in that V. Uh, I'd say it's probably uh, a, a very skinny W. So deep down, a few bumps along the bottom, and then quite a steep upswing. Uh, we'll be able to tell reasonably well, only when we know that the virus is being eliminated. Short of that, all other economic policies on, is on hold. Thank you so much for your comments. I wanted to pose my second question. The issue of the virus is so much more important the economic outlook of the United States and the rest of the world than is what we conventionally call monetary and uh, e economic policy. I have been unsurprised that most public health experts are saying we just need to focus first on dealing with this health problem. What I have been struck by is that most economists also agree with that. During the next two months, there is no question that health comes first. 
it's almost impossible to envisage a scenario where one opens up the economy, as Bill Gates says, with bodies lying in the corner. Well, the most important thing is the, the virus. And uh, it strikes me that uh, uh, unless and until we get that unequivocally solved, the economy is uncertain. Instead of looking at the current economic situation as a recession, we should look at this as a wartime economy. We are fighting a war. And wartime economies uh, need different policies. For example, we can generate much more government debt. Uh, if you look at government debt in the US in World War II, five times the level it is right now. If we open up too soon and see a resurgence of disease, or if we just see the disease waving, rolling through our society, sending people into hospital, finding that we've run out of beds, we've run out of emergency uh, equipment, I think that will actually be bad for the economy in the longer term. Well, I think the health and economy uh, are linked together. And the link, uh, in an odd way, may not be um, uh, as intuitive as some people think. Uh, it's not that, or I should say, uh, correlated as some people think, uh, because if we are af effective in flattening the curve and keeping people away from harm's way, we're flattening that curve, not for the overall impact of the pandemic, on our health and on the economy. We're flattening it because our hospitals and our medical establishment need our assistance in matching our illness to their capacity. As the epidemic starts to ebb, we will begin to face some trade-offs because the death rate will not go down quickly to zero, it'll slowly go down to zero. And at, some, and at that point, there will be pressure to open up the economy. And I, my, my view is we can't wait for the death rate to go to zero, but there is, uh, we would want to wait till the, till the death rate gets, gets much below the peak. So I would envisage the economy opening up at some point in June. So the puzzle for me, which I have not yet figured out, is, is it correct to think that uh, the more we flatten the curve, uh, the longer the impact will last? Um, that would still be the right thing to do, but uh, I think that's the major link between health and economic wealth. My major concern is we'll endeavor to bring the economy back before it is completely balanced. And that is uh, a, a recipe for disaster. You've said, when will this be over? I think it'll be over at, at different times for different countries, even for different cities, uh, as containment is gradually relaxed. If you'll excuse the pun, what we need to do now is take our medicine, continue with this slowdown, this isolation, and then wait until we can at least contain the health crisis before we open the economy up again. We have no alternative, and we should not be, in a sense, reopening the economy so long as that issue is unresolved. Thank you so much for your comments and for joining us today. We look forward to another session very soon. And in the meantime, our thanks to the first responders, to the medical and health professionals who are keeping us safe and healthy. Thank you.